During summer, we see flowers all around us. They add beauty to our gardens. Fields, which once were bare, bloom with color. Flowers are found even in the most unlikely places. The bright colors and delightful smells of flowers make them popular gifts. In spring, when leaf buds are opening on the trees, flowers begin to appear around us. Clusters of hawthorn flowers burst open, and bluebells crowd the woodland floor. As summer arrives with warmer, longer days, trees become heavy with leaves. From tightly packed buds, flowers begin to blossom, a process shown here by speeded up photography. Some plants, like tulips, have just a single flower head. These are called simple flowers. Poppies, too, are simple flowers. Dandelions look simple, but each flower head is actually a cluster of tiny flowers. This budlia, too, is a group of hundreds of small flower heads. to make seeds. To understand how they do this, let's take a close look at a lily. Its most striking feature, its pink petals. Petals are often colorful and are joined to the base of the flower. Stretching up above on slender stalks called stamens are the hammer-shaped anthers. These are covered with millions of tiny pollen grains. Surrounded by the anthers is the stigma, which is the top of the pistil. At the base of the pistil is the ovary, where fertilization and seed development take place. Some flowers have sepals that help protect the delicate petals. The anthers and the ovary of the flower are vitally important parts in making seeds. Let's see why. When animals such as bees visit flowers, the pollen from the anthers brushes off onto their bodies. If the bee visits a new flower of the same type, some of the pollen may be rubbed onto the sticky stigma. Only then can the plant be fertilized and produce seeds. A foxglove spot may help guide bees into the flower. An iris's striking pattern of lines may also help point insects in the right direction. Most flowers produce a sugary liquid called nectar which animals like bees come to drink, attracted by its odor. As the animals search for nectar, they carry the tiny pollen grains from flower to flower. The transfer of pollen from anther to stigma is called pollination. It's the first step in a flowering plant's ability to reproduce.
Flowers are attracted to insects in different ways. In return for helping pollinate flowers, animals like bees are rewarded with nectar. Bees carry the nectar to their hive, where they make it into honey. A bee's diet consists of honey and pollen. Some flowers attract very specific visitors. Hummingbirds come to drink nectar from tube-shaped blossoms. In doing so, the hummingbird's head rubs against the yellow, pollen-covered anthers of the flower. The hummingbird returns to its perch with a yellow crown of pollen. The pollen's difficult to remove. The hummingbird will pollinate the next flower it visits. Some flowers open only after dark and are pollinated by another type of visitor. The smell of the sonoratia flower attracts bats. They come to feed on the rich nectar. Their heads become completely dusted with pollen. Not all plants require animals to carry their pollen. Many simply cast millions of tiny grains to the wind, which will carry at least a few to another flower. Grasses have tiny flower heads. As they sway in the breeze, their anthers release clouds of pollen. Pollen grains have many different shapes, depending on the flowers that produce them. Under a microscope, which magnifies the grains many times, we can see them more clearly. Their rough surfaces help the pollen grains stick to passing insects. However a flower is pollinated, be it by the wind, by bees, or by some other means, it is then ready to begin making seeds. First the pollen grain grows down from the stigma into the ovary. When fertilization has taken place, seeds begin to form and the flower, its purpose fulfilled, dies off protective fruit grows around the developing seeds. Apples are one type of fleshy fruit that contains seeds. They grow where flowers once were on the branch. Strawberries have their seeds on the outside. When poppy flowers die off after pollination, 
They leave behind a dry fruit packed with seeds. After pollination, dandelions develop hundreds of feathery seeds attached to the plant's stalk. Each is a mini parachute. Carried by the wind, dandelion seeds can travel long distances. The feathery parachute may carry them to a new, suitable place to grow. Upon landing, the seed may begin to germinate or grow into new plants. Flowers are vital because they help make seeds from which comes life. The variety and beauty of flowers are endless, as are the places they can be found. In the desert, it rarely rains. The parched ground lies dusty and bare. Here, the growing season is confined to the few weeks a year when there is sufficient water. The rains transform the landscape. Desert plants must grow, flower, and set seed quickly. In the cold Arctic grows a flower called Dryas. The flowers always face the sun, turning with it as it moves through the day. This movement and the cup shape of the flowers helps retain warmth. Insects like flies are attracted to the warmth. As they feed from the flowers, they help pollinate the plants. Most flowers stay open for several weeks, but this one, Morning Glory, lives only for a day. It opens during the morning, hence its name. Come evening, the flower folds and dies. Flowers are the reproductive organs of plants. Without flowers, there could be no pollination. Without pollination, there could be no seeds and no more flowering plants. <laughs>